There was before the test, and then there's after. I figured it was time. I didn't think I would ever find someone. I'm a bit of a weirdo, you know? I took the test. And I met my match. <laughs> I met my match already. Right. I can't imagine life without him. She made me feel alive again for the first time in years. Since the discovery of the soul particle in 2023, Soul Connects has helped more than 15 million people find their perfect match. With over 20,000 clinics worldwide, your soulmate is one simple test away. It's what I've wanted all my life. You can find your happiness here. Soul Connects, your future is waiting. What if there was a test that could match you fundamentally, scientifically, 100% with your soulmate? What would it do to everyone? We're going to start the machine now. It's perfectly harmless, but if you want to stop at any time, just raise your right hand. In terms of what the test is, we spent a day with the leading quantum physicist in England. We had a theory and we put it to him and he said, yeah, that works. And so our idea was the soul particle has been discovered within the eye, the eye being the window to the soul, and that this particle moves at a certain frequency that is individual to each person, but their match has the same particle in their eye and it responds to that. We wanted to tell stories about things that exist now and we didn't want the technology to get in the way. We didn't want flying cars. David Maddox? Hi. Hello. I'm Alison Jones. One of the things that I think audiences are going to be interested and excited by is that each episode is its own short story. And in particular, each one, in addition to, to being a contained story anthology series, it's also, each style is very different. Everybody's got a different opinion on what love means to them. The anthology series works really well for that, and it frees you up with the way you can tell stories. It allows us to do things with genre. We have an episode that's this kind of thriller. You need to call me and tell me what the hell is going on. We have an episode that's a black comedy. Look, I'm letting you have the pretty one with a little basket. There's an episode in here that's like a horror. The dial is changed. You're looking at the same story, but that you're, you're turning it on its axis, and then you get to see a whole different way of looking at the world. If you can scientifically prove your soulmate, what would that do to a world? And all these little tiny stories told within that world. Some of us want more. Some of us want love, the kind of love that you would take a bullet for. You know, it makes you question everything. Was, should I have had a different life? Should I have done this? Why'd you take the test? You know, what could be better than spending the rest of your life with someone who was meant for you and, you know, only you? I think everyone can relate to love or wanting to be in love or thinking they're in love. And that exploration, I think, is, is really fascinating. It always brings you to a place where it's very close to home. You go, this is absolutely possible. You're married, right? Have you had the talk? I don't, just leave it. All married couples have to have the talk. Why did you take the test? I'm on my way to meet my soulmate. Who is he? His name is Nathan. He's a doctor. I look around me and I see people living their best lives. Like they found the answer to some secret. And I hate them. And I also want to be one of them. The big direct question over the whole show is does true love equal true happiness? If you meet the person that you're supposed to love the most, does that mean you'll be happier than you are right now? There must be a soulmate out there for us. I think people invest in that idea just a little bit. And if, if we actually were told in society that, yes, that, that's true, there is one soulmate out there, it would be very hard not to be tempted to take the test. Is this about the damn test? Is that it? That's it. You want to take that test? Is that it? It makes you start thinking, what would I do if there was this thing. It's a really like, interesting question to think about that would just change the way we exist within all of our relationships. Just having the seed in your mind. There is nothing to worry about. Okay. I don't know, what does it mean to have a soulmate? Is a soulmate someone that you make? You become soulmates with them because you've been with them for so long and you've learned about each other? Or is it that you, know, you just are? I love my wife. 
and I love my husband. The very act of choosing whether or not to take the test tells us a lot about how we are as human beings. Sometimes choosing love is choosing to let it go. It's not a far jump to think that the next available platform would be to find your soulmate. Everything is online nowadays. We're basically living online. That's what's the beauty of this. It's so close to now. That's the scary part about it. I got all this love inside, and I just got to give it to the right person. The best shows are the ones where an audience tunes in and they feel a part of it and in some way involved. I imagine every episode you're going to come away and not really know whose side you're on. I think the rule for the show is there's one person for you. If you take the test, it's always going to be the same person. And all that test shows you is the person that you will love the most, more than anyone else. It doesn't mean that they'll necessarily fix you, any problems you have, or that they'll make you happier than you are. Now they could make your life worse, you'll just love them more. It's more about looking inwardly about how that affects modern day relationships.